Hey guys, well it's been a while since I've done a video, um, main reason is I've just been busy with work, being a dad and um, yeah, not having much time on weekends which is my only time. Um, but I do have to do some work because uh, this thing here decided to give it a bit of a burp on the way to work the other day, um, spat cooling out everywhere across the engine bay, I was a bit concerned because even though it just went from like nothing to super hot, which I assume that's when the uh, thermostat opened, um, it didn't really come back down and I was a bit more concerned because doing some diagnostics that night, the water pump, which is electric, had no power going to it. Now I'm not sure why that, um, that means the water pump had no power, um, it's only because it's not broken, it just had no power going to it. So today we're going to go through and I want to basically redo all some wiring anyway. That's some of it's there where the old battery was. Um, and some wiring at the back as well, as you saw in that last episode. Um, when I drove this out to Joe's diner, I kind of took out a power to the relays for the uh, fuel pumps. Um, I, uh, you can't help a sub flying around in there, but unless I strap it down. But um, just want to clean all that up. As plus, I want to do the, the wiring for the uh, the water tank at the back, which I've not done yet. Still on a switch, which annoys the crap out of me because I got to like turn it on manually every time before I go out for a drive. So we'll go through. We'll look at all all of it. Um, hey, I'd love I love to have a. Uh, a PDM controller which would do all my power management for me but um, we don't have an ECU or a device to control it I know there are some devices out there that would do it but I'm not wanting to do that just yet because one um, this car is basically factory in terms of wiring and I don't really want to destroy it and it's still running the uh, the Cal CalMaker ECU which is a uh, sorry the CalMaker software on the factory Delco ECU, um, so which is fine, but doesn't mean in the future some other car might show up, get some work done to it, stay here, become someone's 18th birthday present. But um, when that happens, then I will actually use a uh, aftermarket ECU with a PDM controller. Hey, the, uh, the new Haltex are using Nexus software, so it's either the Elite 2500 or PDM or just a Nexus R5, so we'll get to that when we get to that. But for the moment, um, I'll stop my rambling and we'll go through it, what we want to do, and um, start the wiring and fix all this problem. Um, and I've actually got shit flying everywhere, so this car I've had for over 10 years, so I've like daisy chained and did bits and bits of wiring on top of bits and bits of wiring and things turn on some things and then don't turn on other things and turns on a relay and it, it's a whole mess. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to get Sean up here um, or Bo and we we'll have to go through different things, turn them on, find out what they are, audit it. Basically we're just gonna audit all this wiring and find out what it does. Um, and then we'll look at uh, trying to tidy it up and find out what needs to come on and what doesn't need to come on and use different things to turn things on and etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. all right so it's probably going to be next week but for you it's going to be in the next five seconds all right um, we got Bobo here give me a hand today so we start pulling some stuff apart and trying to trace it um, good news is it wasn't like a broken wire, but um, we feel like... Where's that relay? Where's that relay? Right, where'd you put that relay? Oh, there it is. So yeah, um, looks like she's a bit shagged. In the bin? Ah, I missed. Anyway, um, starting to go through these little bits and pieces, and now hopefully we'll find out.
Alrighty, well, me and Bob have gone through, we've traced out a few things, um, we seem to know what, what is doing everything now, so we can rip it all apart and put it all back together. Uh, Bo has the uh, radiator cap, that we just, we're going to swap it out because that looks pretty dodgy. So if you ever see your radiator cap move, not strong, then it's probably good to replace it. Loose as a goose. Loose as a goose, so that's going to get swapped out with a better one. Alright, let's start fixing all this wiring up, which we'll see shortly. Alright, so realize we're being ripped out, gone for the wiring, so we're just basically going to um, this one here that dual wire. So that is the electrical water pump. So that'll have its own circuit as well as there is this dual core wire here that goes down to the back of the car for the surge tank. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the positive for the fuel pump and the negative wire, which is currently that one, we're going to use that as a data trigger for the water pump down the back. So therefore it gets all its power from down here. Um, and yet to see think if I run it from up here with another relay or I use a trigger from that down to the back with, uh, for a relay down the rear but we'll uh, cross that bridge when I come to it so let's get happy and start chopping some wires and making it easy to work with All right, I'm just gonna put it out here. This whole negative switched relay system that Holden did for the VT, it's a f fucking pain in the ass. All right, so, um, as I wanted to use the ignition uh, source in here uh, from the EFI relay, that's negative switched uh, with a negative hot, well, not in hot, negative side, going through it. Um, we gotta find a new way. Now, the old way was using the fuel pump trigger, but what I wanna do is not have it pulse with the fuel pump. I wanna use the ignition to turn it on. Uh, so in a cool down period, I can just leave the ignition on and it'll still rotate the water through the system. Um, Back to the drawing board because I got to try to find where that trigger is and how to do it. All right, so I've decided to bite the bullet and go with the kiss method for the moment, uh, which is keep it simple, stupid. So we're just going to go. We're not going to have any manual override using anything else um, because there is currently a switch in there that I wanted to use but it's negatively switched to turn on the um, high speed fan relay so I'm going to leave that separate over there and I'll just work out a simple way we're just going to run a positive switch using the fuel pump power 12 volt so that's positive um, and then that will just turn the relays on for that um, I did purchase a product which will come here shortly and then I will redo this again um, and that will allow us to do a lot more fancier stuff um, but for the moment we'll just keep it simple two relays powered by 12 volt from the fuel pump uh, one relay will do that water electric water pump another relay will do the fan down the front for the intercooler um, and then uh, on the positive side of those switching mechanisms, we'll have another one going all the way down the back to turn the trigger on for the relay down the back, because I don't want to run that water pump out the back using um, this relay, because one, uh, I don't want to run two things off of one relay, because I've already found out what happened, and there's plenty of space down there for another relay, so at the moment we'll just do that, and... I can finally take the thing out for a drive and bleed the system again.
Alrighty, so all wiring's done. Nicely tucked up there. Um, still a bit of a mess, but it's a lot better than it used to be. Um, and then down the back. Sorry, that was back, down the front. Two relays here, down there. Now, I finally figured out why I wasn't working when I first turned it on, because you can't run two relays in series, which was hopefully well was done, didn't need the wiring, but um, you can run two lights in series, uh, I believe two DC motors in series, but um, yeah, two relays you can't. Mostly. So it have to be in parallel. Anyway, so that's been rewired. So now what we have to do is put some coolant in it, bleed the system, and take it for a drive. coolant and just put demineralized water in there now because there should, there should be, there's definitely enough glycol in there being that I accidentally put in full concentrate but anyway back to it oh she, she stuck perfectly when it's warm Stopping allows the bubbles to come to the top. How awesome is it running without clicking a switch anymore? Success. We just let it cool down now. It'll suck back in um, once it's cooled down due to its expansion. And then uh, take it off, put the cap back on, and take it for a drive. <clears throat> oh, picked up the new radiator cap. Thank you, Mr. Bobo. So, it's a bit of a tight fit. But um, this Trident one also comes with a safety release valve, if required. Oh, for fuck's sake. There we go. Oh, hard to do this one here. Turn. Oh, okay, I need two hands. There we go, all on. Uh, still got my Coke bottle there as a reservoir. Just gonna get it upgraded. Um, a few things to do, but yep. Let's get the drive. All right, we're back. Thank for a lovely drive. It drove really well. No issues whatsoever. Temps stay perfectly at a third all the whole way. So. Take it, it's all been fixed, no leaks, no spread, no bits. Oh, there's a leak. Accidentally knocked that over. But that wasn't from the car. Coke bottle's doing all right. Perfect. All right, well, that's it for today. Um, all fixed, all running perfectly. Temps are working perfect. Um, I gotta clean this up before it goes everywhere. Um, <sighs> stay tuned. All coming later on. Uh, it's coming into summer, therefore, it's starting to get warm, so that AC's going in. Just been down to Cam Autom to local automotive and got all the AC sucked out, so we're ready to roll. So, stick around. More videos coming soon. Bye!